Well, welcome to Mega Net Gaming, and today we're taking a look at Rohan Blood Feud. Didn't quite make it to this one before it closed down, which is unfortunate, but that's alright. We still found a private server and played the game nonetheless. So, Rohan was published and developed by Play With Interactive. It's first released in 2008. It was recently shut down in October 2020, early in the month, surviving for a, a good long 12 year run, which is quite impressive. This publisher is all, also has Seal Online Blades of Destiny, and they have a new version of Rohan kind of Rohan 2, called Eternal Vengeance in development, with a release date that keeps getting pushed back, with the most recent release date being posted as being November 10th. So I played on the, the Goddess of Destruction private server, which is at god-rohan.com. The backstory of Rohan did take a lot of pictures, so let's go ahead and put up the slideshow. I have some music in the background from the game. Quite an impressive soundtrack and general aesthetic, I will say that, even if the graphics are a bit dated. The backstory of Rohan seems to be heavily influenced by world religion creation stories and myths. Basically, in the beginning of the world of Rohan, Adonai created the world in seven days. It is given to Ian as a gift. Ian created five minor gods shortly after. Roja, Gale, Maria, Phlox, and Silva, who became known as the lesser gods. Or at least that's what the scholars call them. Roja created humans. Gale created the giants. Maria created the elves. Fox created the Dokalfar and Dark Elves, and Silva the Halflings. Each race or species was placed in separate regions with dragons patrolling and dividing the regions. Dragons were created specifically for that purpose. And there was a peaceful period. And the first crack in that piece was when Clout de Lagos, who would be considered the world's first Don, was assassinated by his, assassinated his older brother, Penkel, in a coup. In about a decade and a half, Celio de Lagos rebelled against the regime and took over in a sub in a Another coup. Clout and his followers fled to an island and created a settlement there and referred to themselves as Dons. Given a lot of the social strife, the Elf Queen tried to unite the races, but when they had a meeting to unite the races, only the humans and halflings showed up. Separate from this, the giants decided to ally with the half elves and Dark Elves. Don and Deccan remained neutral and a war eventually began or at least a period of, hot, of kind of a cold war that eventually emerged into an actual war between the factions. And this is where you begin in, the, in playing this game. So it's a sufficient backstory. It's actually quite interesting. And even though you have the standard elf and halflings and whatnot, there are some unique races here that are actually quite interesting, like the Don and Dekan. And it makes it... It's not just the, the Tolkien standards. And with these races... You have build specific classes tied to each build. You have the humans that are knights. When you reach level 50, you can become 
either a guardian or a defender. As a giant, you're a warrior, and your knight's like the the kind of a, a tanky sword and board style class. A giant is a warrior, more your DPS class. You're either a berserker or a savage. Half elf starts off as an archer, becomes a ranger or a scout. Don is your assassin, your rogue class, becomes an avenger or predator. Dark elf, mage, becomes either a warlock or a wizard. Dekan is a dragon fighter, becomes either dragon knight or dragon sage. And the elf is the healer class and becomes either a priest or a templar. Which actually makes quite a bit of sense given it was the elf queen that tried to bring people together. So it would make sense that they would be a healing priest or templar class. For my playthrough, I played as a dark elf and became a dark elf wizard. Now where this becomes even more interesting with the builds is you have a variety of attributes. Base attributes, your standards like strength, your vitality, etc. And by the way you attribute points to these, you can create sub you can create specific sub builds to each of the these classes. I'm mean specific build variations. So, for example, for the Dark Elf Wizard, you really have three potentially viable builds. You have the Psy Wizard, the Intelligence Wizard, or the Vitality Wizard, all which have different uses in PvP and PvE. And I didn't mention, this is a PvP and PvE game. And it does have... RVR elements. So as far as the general gameplay loop, you're going to be spending most of your time grinding. You're going to be doing a lot of quests that involve killing X number of a certain creature. And occasionally you'll be gathering a certain loot item. An X number of a certain loot item. And these get to be in the, the hundred range or more very grindy becomes quite boring and progression is quite slow on the standard server i didn't but i played on xp boosted private server which made the experience quite fun it wasn't to the point where i was like at level cap at the end of my gameplay but i did make it to the 70 range quite quickly and could and had I played optimally I probably would have made it to level cap which gave me time to explore there's also crafting which consists of gathering producing upgrading extracting and you can do that from vegetation minerals and gemstones found in the open world and dungeons there's a fishing system a foraging system you have pets you have mounts and you can party in this game now the movement, even with the mounts, is a bit on the slow side. I'd say a little bit slower than Requiem. Slower than World of Warcraft. Slower than Final Fantasy XIV, but... But even though it's slower, it's not... It's still fluid for the most part. Except, it's not uncommon to be walking on the edge of a side of the road and all of a sudden you hit an invisible wall because for whatever reason there is something raised in the ground you can't pass. There's also no jump mechanic. So hitting invisible walls does become quite frustrating. It does put a damper on what would be quite the fun open world exploration experience. There's a lot of mob variety and, and when you aren't being hampered the hampered by invisible walls and whatnot the world there is a lot of great use of elevation to make this feel like an actual unique world an actual like realistic world lots of unique architecture lots of unique in settings biomes really the world exploration was my favorite part of this game just seeing what I'd come across next. Would I come across an orc village or some sort of 
weird volcanic area with golems or some large castle that's abandoned. You never know it. You, and, there, and the map is very large. So there's quite a bit to find. And the dungeons, while a bit basic in design, are quite challenging and also interesting to explore. However, this is one of those games where there is something good to say, but then there is something bad to say to cancel it out. The draw distance. I had all the settings pumped up to max. It was almost all... Every, it was pretty much guaranteed that the names would appear above models before the models. The draw distance is quite poor for NPCs. The end game, which I didn't get to do much of, consists of gear grinding and PvP battles mostly. There's not not a ton of content. It, I would say it's an average amount of content for an MMO RPG, but that doesn't make it sufficient content. Really, it's the ride. It's the it's the the fun of this game is either doing the PvP and the grinding stuff with friends once you made it to end game, or just the ride to level cap. So the positives, the wide variety of builds that you can, with lots of customization options, including the possibility to make absolutely broken builds. The large open world that makes great use of elevation and color. The general aesthetic, the soundtrack, the lore and backstory. There is the opportunity for quite and there's an opportunity for this to be a serious role-playing game, as in, like, actual role, actually role-playing. Staying in character. However, the game is very grindy. It really does need more content. The invisible walls, the slow movement speed, and just uh, a lot of... So a lot of stuff in the game is just, just if at times this feels like a, a very polished MMO, and then you come across something that just doesn't. It feels like something should have been corrected in the beta stages. So where would I rank this overall, as far as our list goes? I I personally just gave it a a B. It's an above average game that I would recommend. I put it, it ranks third on our list out of the 10 games Meg, Egg, and Calabunga have covered so far, which puts it, which kind of breaks it into three tiers. We have the recommended games, which are Azeron's Call, A World to Live Online, and Rohan. The Take It or Leave It games, the, the average games, uh, in the middle, the middling games. Which would be the Universalist, Fungi, Maple Story 2, which oddly enough, I shouldn't be laughing, but all three of those are actually closed down. So I guess th there isn't really the choice there. And then on the bottom, the games that I that we wouldn't recommend are the Hammers and Bless Online, Weapons of Mythology, and Deathmatch. Actually, hold on one moment. One moment. I think I might have made a mistake on our list. Let me go ver to Discord and verify this. Oh, yes, I made a mistake. Let's correct that. I'm not going to re-record. But I will correct the error. There we go. The hammer's in, end is actually in the take the average category. So it's not in the not recommended. It's in the, the middle of the road. Take it or leave it. Maybe give it a chance. Maybe not. But we just don't have a strong 
opinion either direction. I am excited to see Rohan 2. It's coming out November 10th, Eternal Vengeance. And I'm also excited to check out Rohan Mobile to see how those games are. Love the universe. And it's sad to see Blood Feud go. And I hope that the community... I hope the Rohan 2 is a suitable replacement. And I hope the private server scene for the Blood Feud continues to thrive. So the people that want to play the original still can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.